how he came into Kansas City like I did. And it made me want to get my life together. It made me want to be a community activist. It made me want to be positive in my community as opposed to being negative in the community. And so I thank God for him. Okay, we got a little program. He talked, he, he matter of fact, he, he went over a whole lot of stuff in our program. But next, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little connection to the with the green duck to activism and words of appreciation for Jimmy Townsend. I want to ask Mr. Richard Tyber to come up here and talk about Mr. Leon George, one of the original five, um, uh, owners of the green duck. Uh, As I said, my name is Richard Tolbert. I used to live upstairs in the Green Duck, but I really appreciate Ron organizing this, um, Ron, what did you call this? This peace summit. Because, you know, I, I think but it, isn't this kind of a neutral zone where we lay aside our differences for one evening, break bread together. So the first thing I want to do is surrender my weapons. Yeah, okay. Um, I was asked to speak about Leon Jordan, and it's really appropriate because black politics in Kansas City did not begin with Leon Jordan and Freedom Aid. It, it took a different direction. What Leon Jordan and the other founders of Freedom Aid accomplished was they merged together black politics, which had existed. I think we always had the vote in Kansas City, Missouri. I think black people could always vote. We've had it a long time, since I think the 19-teens or whenever. No, 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 we had it long before that. But in any event, yes, but in any event, we had black politics before. But Leon's argument was that it wasn't an independent black politics. The black political leaders were lieutenants of the white boss. They used to call them the plantation boss. The most infamous of which was a guy named Lou Wagner. But in any event, what Leon and the Freedom Inc. people did was they merged black politics with the civil rights movement. The way Freedom Inc. came to power in the black community, and remember, as I said, Freedom Inc. was not the first black politics. There were black politicians around in office long before Freedom Inc. people ever won. They'd run and lose. But in 1963, the mayor of Kansas City, a guy named Iles Davis, went to Central High School. Um, got the city council to do the right thing, and they adopted a public accommodations ordinance before the 1964 uh, uh, national legislation was passed. So in 1963, Kansas City was ahead of the country. However, the white tavern owners got together, collected signatures to do a referendum to repeal that ordinance. Now, the, the, the preachers, the civil rights organizations, the other long-time activists in the community came together, organized, and they went to the black political leaders of that time, and they said, we want y'all to help us fight off this referendum. We got the law in the books, but we got to fight the key. And they asked a real easy question from my friend Cecil Williams. They said, do y'all have any money? And when the black civil rights leaders and the preachers said no, they said, well, come back to us when you got some money. So they turned to Freedom Aid. And they said, look, we don't have any money, but y'all are messing around a little bit in politics. We could use your help. So will you help us organize the community politically, get out the black vote, so we can defend the public accommodations ordinance? To make a long story short, the ordinance was defeated in the white wards, but the turnout in the black wards with the help of Freedom Inc. was so great that the ordinance was saved. That was in 1963. The next year in 1964, the black community voted out the old black politicians and voted in Freedom Inc. This is in 1964. And Freedom Inc. has been the dominant political organization ever since then. Just one more thing I want to say about Leon Jordan. I think Leon Jordan left a legacy. And he left a big idea. To me, his big idea, and he used to preach it all the time, he would say, we need to put the interests of the black community ahead of our own personal interests, ahead of Freedom Inc.'s interests, 
ahead of the Democratic Party's interests, ahead of everything. We need to look out for the black community first. If we take care of the black community, keep it strong, healthy, and prosperous, all of us will do just fine. I remember once in closing, there was some uh, election where we were mad at some, we were angry with someone who was the leading contender for an office, and so Freedom Inc. was supporting somebody else. And I remember asking Leon, Bruce, Lenny, I said, well, what if we back this guy and we lose? What they said was, this is something we need to keep in mind today. They said, look, if you can carry your own community in politics, you'll be fine. You don't need to win everything. You just need to win your own precincts and your own wards. And therefore, that ties into what Leon was saying. Look out for the community first, and everything else will fall in line. The history of activism in our community goes way, way back to the 1700s, 1800s. And hopefully when we do these things in the future, we'll continue this conversation. Thank you very much.